I speak the name of Jesus over you In your hurting, in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak his name cause it's all that I can do In desperation I'll seek heaven One year ago, our community was devastated when the unthinkable happened on a normal Monday morning. The Covenant School shooting rocked Nashville, and it broke all of our hearts. We lost people that we loved dearly. Three innocent children, Evelyn, William, and Hallie, went to school and didn't return home to their families. Three respected educators, Catherine, Cynthia, and Mike also tragically lost their lives while doing what they loved. Our town was brought to its knees. Words felt inadequate. Yet we have all seen firsthand how the worst of humanity 
has a way of bringing out the best of humanity. Out of death comes resurrection, even if the pain never goes away. A year ago today, many of us spent some time across the street at Woodmont Baptist Church. Some were at Vanderbilt Hospital. Others prayed from their homes and offices. First responders were heroic. But we will never forget where we were and how we felt on that day. Tonight we have gathered to remember those that we have loved and lost. Tonight we've gathered as a faith community to reflect, to pray, to cry, and to support each other. This will be a service of hope and healing. This will be a service of prayer and reflection. This will be a service of special music and candlelight as together we continue along the long road of healing and recovery. I want all of you to know that I am glad that you are here tonight. We welcome you. You are loved by this church and by this community. To the covenant families here, you have been through so much. And some of you have been through more than any of us can imagine. But through faith, hope, and love, we are here for each other. I want to thank Reverend Farrell Mason, who is Woodmont's Minister of Pastoral Care, for all of her work that she's put into this beautiful service tonight, and for the love and support that she has shown all the Covenant families over the past year. She's going to bring us some words of hope and healing in just a little bit. I also want to thank our musical artists who will play, uh, Lauren, Sarah, uh, Vince, Mariah. I'm going to leave somebody out, but thank you guys for being here because we all know that music heals and it's good for the soul. Uh, in the powerful words of the Apostle Paul, we are afflicted in every way but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. This Holy Week, may we remember that God is alive and present in the midst of our pain and suffering. And he calls us to always live in the hope of Easter. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come to you tonight with heavy hearts and many tears, remembering those that we have loved and lost and praying for strength and courage. May you be present in this special place and in the lives of many who are hurting. Tonight, may we honor and remember Evelyn, William, and Hallie, Catherine, Cynthia, and Mike, all of whom we lost one year ago today. I pray for the Covenant community and the Nashville community as we continue to love and support each other. Remind us, God, of the message of Easter that in the darkness we can see the light. In our pain, we can feel the love. And even in death, we can experience the power and the hope of resurrection. Amen. Clay's golfing, buddy. That's why I'm here, because he invited me. It's what you do. You support your friends. You make, make things, try to make things better for everybody. Um, I was here last year to sing for Evelyn, and um, I had the privilege of, of getting to honor her and singing uh, What a Wonderful World. It was a song she was going to sing in a school program the very day of her service, and uh, I can say I've done this a long, long time. That was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, sing for that sweet kid. And I see your family's here tonight, and it's sure good to see you. And uh, I chose a song to sing tonight that's new just because uh, I think sometimes a new song can be as powerful as one you've heard your whole life. And uh, this song came from uh, just my, um, my hope for all of us to be better. Feels 
got a broken heart But sure could use A brand new start How the hell did we wind up So far apart Feels like the whole world Has got a broken heart Ellis Island So I love this family in front of me so much. You, all of you, all of you, rows and rows of you. Um, so I think it's been over two decades that my son Charlie um, was going through treatment for cancer in New York City. We lived in a little shoebox apartment. And uh, some people that loved us from Spartanburg, South Carolina, sent up some sticky notes and index cards with scriptures. And we wallpapered the inside of our little apartment with those scriptures. And so a year ago, with the help of the living net of her friends and family, we did the same thing. And so it reminded me of that when I visited you on Monday. So I have printed an artist in town, Evie Coates, did this work of art um, with this scripture. But I also have put some other scriptures on the back that mean something to me. And so what I'm hoping is that you're going to take it home and you're going to put it in a place your car, your bathroom, your kitchen, your somewhere in your house, um, and it'll be a trigger of hope when we leave this place tonight. So I'm going to begin with three scriptures. The first one is from Lamentations 3, 21 through 23. And this is what I shall tell my heart, and so recover hope. The favors of Yahweh are not all past. His kindnesses are not exhausted. They renew every morning. And then this is uh, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 70 through 79. Through the heartfelt mercies of our God, God's sunrise will break in upon us, shining on those in the darkness, those sitting in the shadow of death, then showing us the way one foot at a time, down the path of peace. And finally, Jeremiah 29, 11. 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you hope and a future. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, here we are, still, leaning into you and one another. You've asked so much of us over this last year, but also you have shown up for us in ways that we could never have imagined. Thank you for the glimmers of hope when our days and nights were covered in darkness. Thank you for sending your angels and friends and family and strangers who arrived at just the right moment to save us for another day. Thank you for the music, the scriptures, the sermons, the experiences in nature that have helped us feel you near. Thank you for the resilience of our spirits in the face of such terrible loss. Thank you for love. It really is the most miraculous thing. Not a breath is possible without it. Now, may we commend our spirits to you. Cover them behind and before, beside and within, with your powerful wings of hope. Amen. So for over 25 years, my family has visited Teton National Park in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. One of our favorite hikes is the String Lake Trail around Jenny Lake and then up into Cascade Canyon. There's a section on the trail that looks like a meteor has landed and scorched every square inch of green. In the summer of 1985, a terrible forest fire burned through 900 acres of vegetation. It appeared that the population of the lodgepole pine tree was gone forever. For many years, it looked like a cemetery of ash. But then, these little green shoots started popping up all over the place. What had happened? A tiny miracle. You see, the porous was created and programmed to come back to life. Dozens of pine cones live within the crown of the lodgepole pine tree. Inside are these seeds that are sealed tightly by a kind of superpower glue. Only extreme heat can soften the resin, thus releasing the seeds. After the fire, the earth sets into motion Project Resurrection, Project New Life. If you visit Teton National Park today, you will see a whole new generation of lodgepole pine trees. How did we get through that catastrophic day of March 27th? That first devastating week, the first month, the third month, the seventh month, and now a year. Trees are one thing, human hearts are another. I didn't know how we would rise from this kind of devastating trauma and loss. Now I do. The answer springs from Jesus' promise. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The divine spark in the pine tree and the human heart can never be extinguished. God's love is too stubborn and unrelenting. It never gives up. It slowly revives the pine forest burned to a crisp, and most remarkably, the human spirit. God proclaimed from the beginning that creation would be a place of life not death. Nothing created in love ever truly dies. It would go against who God is in his redemptive plan for creation. The mission is life and life in full. God supremely has planned for every scenario, for that lodgepole pine and for our human hearts most especially. Our whole lives are held together by this ultimate truth. Death cannot have us because God has us. We are made to rise. 
Our precious souls were created for eternities. Frederick Buechner once said, resurrection means that the worst thing is never the last thing. There is life after death. The little deaths that we experience here on earth and our final death. One day, like Evelyn, we will be transformed by light and love in the most mysterious and miraculous way. It's a promise. We will resurrect and we will be more alive than we have ever been. No more tears, no more fear, no more pain, no more loss. All will be as God originally intended. Heaven will exceed our imaginations in every good and beautiful and divine thing that we have ever experienced here on earth. We will live amongst the angels and every single person we have ever loved. But Project Resurrection is not just for heaven. It's God's plan for us here too, here and now. Tucked inside my heart and yours is an invincible hope. There will be circumstances obliterating our hearts and turning life as we knew it to seeming ash. But God is prepared for the unexpected, the devastating. God will not let us stay in the tomb anywhere. Just like the lodgepole pine, God has a plan to give us new life too. The reality is we do live in a broken world, which means we must be prepared with faith and courage to rise from the ashes many times over our lifetime. Never alone, God is close as our heartbeat and as near as our breath. What I know to be true is what appears impossible, God makes possible. When we see no way, God makes a way. When we say, there is absolutely no coming back from this, God gently smiles and says, watch. He rolls away the stone from the tomb and Jesus walks out. No matter how dark and grave the night, the light always returns, prevails. God is tender. God is creative, God is determined. The mission is always to transform us into risen people. The earthly world might see us defeated, but God does not, love will not allow it. So get ready, because God, the author of creation, is intent on writing new plots of hope in your story and mine. To resurrect here on earth is the most beautiful, faithful thing we can do on this planet. But let's be honest. The process of resurrection here on earth is not easy, slow and brutal at times. Rising from the ashes is blood and sweat and tears and dark nights of the soul labor. It is so difficult to start life back after such terrible loss. Ash everywhere. It requires courage we didn't think we had. It takes a living net of beloved community to hold us so we don't fall. We will weep, we will curse the skies, we will doubt God. We will believe we will never ever experience joy, peace, like before. But God promises, hold on, give me some time, have faith, because I am going to bless you. Slowly, God edges the stone away from whatever tomb of circumstance holding us captive. Gently, God helps us to see There is a reason that we are still here. 
Tenderly, God opens a new chapter. Never, ever forget that beneath the ash, our roots are eternal. Miraculously, little green shoots push through your charred earth. We don't forget where we have come from or the pain that we have experienced. The loss lives front of heart. But with gritty hope, we decide to follow God out of the tomb. In and through the light, we experience healing, redemption, even joy again. Love provides a way forward. So I admire the wise little book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. We are introduced to these poignant characters on a special journey. A dear and powerful conversation takes place between the horse and the boy. Sometimes, said the horse. Sometimes what, asked the boy. Sometimes just getting up and carrying on is brave and magnificent. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes just getting up and carrying on is brave and magnificent. God will move heaven and earth on our behalf. I am stunned by the infinite, mysterious, and creative ways that God, that God breathes new life into ash. When I look at Katie and Mike and Eleanor and their families, <coughs> when I look at my coworker and friend Abby and her family, the Buck family, the Pyron family, the Davis family, the Manning family, Lynn Thompson, all the Covenant students and their families, this special church, Claudia Husky and the team at Safer for Tennessee, the whole Nashville community. It is so clear that Project Resurrection is in motion. Y'all have become my hope teachers, proving the darkness cannot, will not have us. Love is triumphing over evil. People are rising all around me. That invincible hope that God planted in our center has been activated. We are fight, fight, fighting for the world God intended for us a world where children are safe and goodness conquers and we live in peace. <clears throat> Resurrection is possible if we have God and one another. Look around you. It is because of the person sitting next to you, before you, behind you, and every single one of these pews, along with God's radical and redemptive love that we have arrived to this moment. A risen people, that's how we were made. That is who we are today, and that is our promised future. Amen. Pushing that down so I can see the children. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm Ellie. That was so beautiful. Um, and it is, it is an honor to be with you. Uh, I just think that there is no coincidence that the year anniversary of a really heavy day in our city happens to land in the center of Holy Week, um, where we remember the most beautiful story I know. And it is the story of God Himself entering into the depths of all our sorrow 
to the point of the grave uh, and then walking out of it to show us that He makes a way. He is called a man of sorrows. And the story that his life tells is that as deep as the pain can take us, love is a deeper well. And um, I feel like what I'm doing when I'm up here is I'm sitting in the middle of a deeper well because each and every one of you um, has been the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank God that we do not have to walk through sorrow and suffering and holding on to hope alone. We need each other. Uh, and so it is an honor and a privilege and a holy and sacred space to uh, be with you here tonight. Uh, this song that I'm gonna play comes from Lamentations 3, 21 through 23. Uh, For this I call to mind and therefore have hope because of the Lord's great love for us. We are not consumed. His compassions, they never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And then Hosea 6.3 says, let us press on to acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. For as surely as the sun rises, He will appear. And I, I love that God knew that we might have a hard time remembering that He is always with us. And so he was like, no problem. I will ride it in the sky. Day in and day out. There is good news. There is good truth. That you could never change. No matter what you do. You are
Thank you, everybody. Um, our immediate and extended family will never be able to fully express the gratitude and love we have for this community and for the entire church. Since March 27, 2023, you've prayed for us, you've cared for us, and have been by our sides for 365 days. You are all gifts from above, and we love you. Tonight, we're gonna let our girls talk for us. Katie is gonna read a poem that was written by Evelyn at the Covenant School, and then Eleanor is gonna finish the evening with some words on hope. Okay, this is a poem by Evelyn Marie Dickhouse, and it's called, I Am. And I just wanna show you all, I'm not gonna read this part, but she has in parentheses, when to pause, she also has at the end, wait for applause. <laughs> so, just remember that. I'm gonna hold it. There you go. I am by Evelyn Dickhouse. I wonder about the tree outside. I wonder if it feels like me. I wonder if it's still growing like me. I wonder if God put it there to show his creation. Pause. Like me. <laughs> I wonder. I go outside. I see God's creation in the tree. I see the big, beautiful green leaves on the tree. I see the many birds that are making nests for their eggs. I see the splitting branches. I see. I am Evelyn. I believe. I am God's creation like the tree. I believe God's story. I believe we should love one another like the birds making a nest. I believe in God. I believe. Wait for applause. Wait for applause. <laughs> We love you all so much. So I've been trying to think of a way to um, honor Evelyn. And because she is our shining light, uh, we, Woodmont, has um, put a candle stand in the prayer garden where people can come, all of you, at any time, at any time of the day when you're going down Hillsborough Road or coming out of church, um, you can come and light a candle on the candle stand and say a prayer. And so we're gonna see that afterwards if anyone wants to come and see. Right now, we're gonna light some candles in her honor.
could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. Every song must end. I've got one response I've got just one move With my arms stretched wide I will worship you So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again So Don't you get show me, lift up your song. You've got a lion inside those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Well, don't you get show me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside those lungs. Get up and You get shall me lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside those lungs Get up and praise the Lord
So I said a year ago, um, that we're going to create this living net of people, friends, family, church, and we're going to take care of one another, and that doesn't stop today. So you're stuck with us. How about that? It's a good thing. Yes. It's a very good thing. Um, so Eleanor is going to close us out tonight. She's going to give our benediction. Hope. I chose the word hope as my word to live by because it is so important. 2023 was an emotionally hard year for me and my family, but there was always hope. Hope that we will get through it. Hope that she will come back. Hope is like a spark. It is brighter in the darkness. I had never paid much attention to my hope till my life was covered in darkness. This darkness is suffocating, numbing, and hard. Then I found hope and suddenly realized that I am not alone and that I am loved and surrounded. That little spark of hope cleared my mind and opened my heart. Without hope, that journey would be a difficult thing. Finding hope is one of the hardest things on that journey. Then you find it. Not only is hope a shining light for everyone, but also it shines brighter in the darkness. Having both joy and hope in your life makes your life easier. Hope is joy, hope is love, hope is a shining light. And actually, I just wanted to say something. I wanted to say thank you to both my parents. I wanted to say thank you to my whole entire family. I wanna say thank you to my friends who've always been there. But most of all, I want to say thank you to my sister. She taught me to be someone. Like, she taught me to be an older sister. And she taught me how to truly love and how to be creative and fun. And honestly, I wouldn't be a sister without saying this, but um, Evelyn, my name means shining light, and your mean, yours means hazelnut. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you all. <laughs> Wonderful. We're gonna we're gonna go to the garden of prayer and. Um, any of you are welcome to uh, join us out there if you'd like, either tonight, of course, in the future. Thank you all so much for being here.